Okay, so we're going to do some math about penguins. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give each two of you, I'm going to say pair of you, that means two of you, a set of these penguins. And what you'll notice is one of the pieces has one row of penguins, one of the pieces has two rows, one has three rows, and one has four rows. And every row has the same number of penguins. And I'm going to ask you to work with your partner to think about how many penguins there are. We already know how many there are in one strip, right, in one row. But I'm going to be asking you to work with your partner to think about how many there are in two rows, how many there are in three rows, how many there are in four rows. And then, even though I didn't give you five rows, could you make five rows? Sure. I could make five rows like this, couldn't I? Make six rows. You could make six rows? You could make six rows? Could you make seven rows? Yep. Could you make eight? No. I think you can. I think you can make every amount of rows up to ten rows. That's all I'm giving you is enough to make ten rows. And every time you figure out how to make another number of rows, I want you to figure out how many penguins all together that is. Okay? And I want, I want you to take about five minutes with your partner to try out different numbers of rows and to record your thinking. So if you take these back to your desk, desks, do you have a piece of paper and a pencil that you can record your, your thinking? Yes? No. Take five minutes and work with a partner, find all the different numbers of rows, and for each number of rows, write down how many penguins that is all together. So what might that look like? What could that look like on your paper? What could it look like? Yeah. Yeah, it could be. That would could take you a long time if you were to actually draw. So maybe you can just write. Like, how about if you wrote one row has how many penguins? Ten. Ten. And then if you try two rows, two rows has, and you can write down what you figure out. And then you can just keep recording each time you try another number of rows, you can write it that way. Okay? So tell 
me a little bit about what you mean by that. You count how many rows. So here's one, two, three, four rows. really pretty interesting, isn't it? Because when you put a zero here, that pushes the four into telling us how many tens there are, right? So if we had just written four, it would tell us how many ones there were, which wasn't what you meant. But when you put zero at the end, it says, oh, now that means four tens. Nice. Five? Because five was made up of two rows and three rows, two rows and three rows. So you knew that two rows had 20 and three rows had 30. So you got 50 because two rows made 20 and three rows made 30. Did somebody, uh, McKenna, how did you, McKenna, can you tell us how you did it? Two rows plus three rows equals five rows. And then, oh, you just kind of did the same strategy as here. You know, you knew it was going to be five rows, and each row had to have ten in it, so that tells us how many tens there are. Five tens. How about six rows? So you were, oops, I guess I'm going to have to go down here. You already knew that 50, five rows was 50, and another row was 10 more. So you did 50 plus 10 to get 60. Nice. How about seven rows? Yes? How'd you do that? together. One, two, three. Ninety. Ninety. And here might have been a little bit of a surprise. Ten rows. Um, who was surprised by the answer? Somebody that was surprised. Yeah. Um, uh, it's 100. And what was surprising about that? Um,
Um, when, when I was in second grade, I know that 10 plus 10 was 20. So 10 groups of 10. So if there's 10 in each 10, then it would be 100. Ah, very nice. Well, how do you think about it? Sure. 